The same reason that women are getting butt implants, booty injections, are the same reasons that many people are broke. If you have been paying attention, you know that Bootylicious is a movement. These are women who have less than ideal posteriors that have built them up through working out and lifting weights over a period of one to three years. Or essentially, flat booty Frida can now go to big booty Betty, depending upon what she has, what she needs to build up, and a wide variety of other unknown variables. There are many young women out there that if they got in the gym, they ate right and they did certain things, they could build a booty of their dreams. But we live in a society of instant gratification, microwave results, and therefore you have people who are doing very dangerous things to get those big booties and to have those financial moonshots. The refusal to deploy delayed gratification. Can anyone say Bitcoin? We have these wild schemes of people who are trying to get money. Instead of getting money over a period of time, we want to do it just like, bam, I got money so I can make it rain. It does not work that way for most people. Will you come across someone that will have a financial moonshot? Absolutely. They represent probably less than 5% of the population. So we have so many people who feel that they can get the results that 5% of the population are getting and they compare that and contrast that as a norm versus the exception that it is. This is why so many people are on that financial moonshot. I'm gonna win the lottery. I posted a very interesting article on my Facebook page talking about people who get into casinos. I have never been a gambler. I'm not sure I went to Vegas once. I've been to Vegas a few times, but I was in the casino and I played the one arm bandit and I had a hundred bucks and I said to myself, once this hundred bucks is gone, that's it. Pretty much when I used to go to the strip club, I had a similar principle. Spent my hundred bucks and it tried to suck me in. I hit it in the second or third pool, I won 50 bucks. So I was like 150 bucks, right? I went home with $280 because I stopped. I knew that the odds were against me I knew that the longer you play, the greater chances that the house has to win. Took my 280, went to my room, went to sleep, and that was it, and I did not play anymore. Similar thing in the strip club. I used to be the bird dog dude, like get sit, sit next to somebody that's just like, make it rain, make a difference. She was right in front of me, or she was two feet away from me. Same view. And this is your episode of Cheap Strip Club Patronage. So many people are looking for that wild financial moonshot that it is harming American prosperity because so many people have their hopes, their dreams, their ambitions paired to a financial moonshot. Now, you know, just to be clear, a financial moonshot is a sudden infusal of a large sum of cash. You could like win the lottery, sign an NFL contract, sign an NBA basketball contract, or an NFL in Major League Baseball contract. Once again, and I did the research, if you take all of the football players, you take all the NBA players, you take all of the major league baseball players, the soccer players, the actors, the rappers, on this planet, you may literally have 15,000 men. You go international, maybe 20. So we have all of these people who are like, hey, I could be like LeBron, I could be like Jordan, I could be like this soccer player, I could be like this NFL player. When they represent such a small percentage of the overall population is crazy, but this is who people are looking at saying, I can do that, or I have a shot, or the number of lottery winners. I think someone just came uh, forward, he won 298 million, and people are hoping and praying that this is gonna be them, when more than likely it won't. We have got to get away from the financial moonshot. It's not gonna happen and this is how it kills American prosperity. Because people are figuring out that they're gonna win the lottery or some extraordinarily, exceptionally fortunate financial event's gonna happen that they don't prepare for tomorrow today. They put off putting away money for retirement. They put off starting the business. They put off developing new skills. They just, what day? I'm gonna have a bunch of money. I, I'm not even gonna have to work that hard for it. That is killing American prosperity. In the other video that I did yesterday, I was talking about, it took me six years to go from 25 bucks an hour from consulting to well over a thousand bucks. 
six years. The way that people jump and change jobs, like two or three careers, but so many people don't want to stick with anything long enough to see valid and solid results. So this is why everyone is hoping and praying on the financial moonshot. And this is why I got a client who won the lottery because this is something else that happens to the financial moonshot people. Because you have won the lottery or have gotten an NFL contract, many people feel that you didn't really work that hard to get it, so therefore you should share. You, you know, sharing is caring. You should help people out. I will let you know that someone came to my client with a restaurant ideal. There was no business plan, there were no numbers, there was nothing, it's just like, hey, I need $350,000. No plan. You know what's gonna happen? That $350,000 was gonna be absorbed into whatever wild scheme this person had, and then they were gonna come back because this is the feeling that many people have. You got it so quick, you got it so easy. You are not a good human being if you don't share. You're not a good human being if you don't help out your fellow man because you got plenty. You got plenty to feed the needy, so you should feed the needy. Doesn't work that way either because typically once a person reaches a certain level of financial independence, they may be charitable, they may donate some to charity, they may help a few friends, but they don't want to become the community bank because if they become the community bank, they will be bankrupt. And this is, happens over and over and over again. So how do you change the paradigm? How do you change this moonshot activity? First, you start with your children. You need to let them know how much money you make. I know you're like, I don't need to let little Jerome know how much money I make. That ain't little Jerome's business. Well, actually, if you want to shape little Jerome's financial future by telling him how difficult and how challenging it is to earn money, Little Jerome's gonna develop a true and proper perspective on money versus, oh man, money just magically appears whenever I ask for it. You have so many people whose kids, if they knew the truth, they would not be as bratty, they would not be as arrogant, they would not be so petty because one of the things that you're trying to do, and you say you're trying to protect your children, you're not trying to protect your kids, you're trying to protect yourself. The other day, I was in Chick-fil-A, and this young man came in suited and booted, dress uh, suit, suit jacket, tie, dress pants. He was there for an interview. And I saw him leave and he got into a Mercedes Benz, but not a Mercedes Benz that someone of his age would drive. It was clearly his mom and dad's. There's this false perception that kids of wealthy, well-to-do parents are spoiled. Some of them are, most of them aren't. This kid's parents said, look, you need to go get a job. We're going to let you drive the family car. I know of another situation where someone who's a multimillion heir just bought his kid a car. And she asked, it's like, Dad, can I get your car? And Dad said, no, you can't. You're going to get a four-cylinder car that's good with good gas mileage. There's this weird perception that so many people think that when people get money, that they're just going to, like, let it go away. Uh, I had this comment on one of my Facebook pages and it was talking about why so many people who make 200, 300, and 400K are flat broke. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. And hopefully you will find out this to be true for yourself. When I got to $100,000, $150,000, the money kind of stacked up. You will find yourself that when you're in a situation, unless you just got a drug habit or exceptionally crazy spending habits, that once you get to a certain income level, it just stacks up. You don't really spend the money because it's really hard for a normal person to spend $100,000 a year, and that's net, 100000 That's, you know, what you get to spend after. It's just hard for a sensible, sane person to spend that much money. And that's why I know that so many people have never had this money. And when you look at the stats and you see that average income, household income is 55 k per year, then you begin to understand some stuff why people don't have money for retirement. There are just many people, and, and folks will disagree with me, they don't make enough money to make money. They don't make enough money for their money to work for them. Because I know someone, years ago I used to date, and I asked her how much money she had saved. And she said, I got $42,000. I was like, really? 
And she said, yeah, that's in my 401k. I was like, no, how much money do you have saved in the savings account? She said, oh, absolutely nothing. It took her 10 years to put that $42,000 into her, either it was a 401k or our, whatever it was. It took 10 years. She wasn't really bad with money. She didn't have a lot of crazy habits, but she had low income. And this is a big problem because as we go forward, many folks are gonna have low income because many of these jobs are gonna disappear. We're gonna have like the bell curve. We're gonna have a whole bunch of low paying jobs and we're gonna have a bunch of high paying jobs. And in the middle, it's gonna be very thin. And these high paying jobs, you're gonna to have to have exceptional skill sets to get these jobs that most Americans just don't have. Hence the financial moonshot, because it's gonna seem so daunting. It's gonna seem like it takes so much time, but the reality is, and you know, this is from Sally Mae Jones, uh, elderly neighbor of mine, just to tell me all of the time, if you live long enough, you're going to become old. And I was just like, okay, whatever. And now that I'm older, I begin to realize what she was saying. Let's say it takes you 15 years to start a business and get to where you want to be. Whether you're working on that business or not, time is moving by. Time is ticking. Time is gone. Time is a non-renewable resource. So you could take those 15 years, take your nuts, uh, take your hits, take all of your losses and weather through the storm and then boom, you're clean. Or you could sit around and keep waiting on this financial moonshot that's more than likely never going to happen and then be one of these old people who's driving the truck at 84 to pay your wife's medical bills because you didn't have enough money. And that was the story of someone who did all of the right stuff. Once again, it is my contention that most of the financial advice is predicated on poor people and keeping poor people poor. If you were getting real solid financial advice to make you make more money, most advisors will tell you you need to make more money and then invest. You need to be out of debt and then invest. You need to be making money where you can have enough money to put three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand towards your investments per month. That's how you're going to get rich. Not at $500 per month. It's not going to do it. Trust me. And if you don't believe me, take $500 a month times at times a 12% return for 40 years and see what you come up with. That's all I got to say on that matter. So for those of you who need more help, go below. In the first two comments, there is enrolling your basic financial education where I talk about a lot of these things and go in depth, 75 bucks. And then if you need more seasoning, there's another comment with stuff that can help you develop the skills and the resources to build your business, to build your hustle over a period of years. It's not going to happen in a week. It's not going to happen in a month. You can start a hustle in a month, but for your hustle to be elegant, it's kind of probably going to take you two to five years. But once again, let's take Sally Mae Jones. If you live long enough, you're going to be old, meaning, you do nothing, the time's going to pass. You do something, the time's going to pass. Make a decision. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. You getting stuck, I see feet in the mud. You have been caught in the flood <laughs> While the water isn't part of we run We put you so the harvest is us <laughs> You have been enjoying life Sipping the syrup and aligning the way <laughs> Taking whatever you touch The sword of the wicked is covered in blood <laughs> Welcome to the city of the nonsense Pleasure is the peace we can find in Dive in, ride a shotgun alongside the divide in Taking a piece of the pie takes for what's provided We won't